My name is Carson. Welcome back to Thrifty Garage. In today's video, we've got a retaining wall that has failed. This isn't a video to put shame on the contractor that built this or uh, the facility that it's at, but to uh, learn, we're gonna take a look at this and see what happened and learn from it and see what could have done, been done to prevent this. So this is a pretty large retaining wall built out of these concrete waste blocks. They've already started the process of taking these back apart and uh, they're not back to the point of the rebuilding, but they're still uh, taking it apart. Um, and if my memory serves me correctly, I believe this section of wall has actually already failed. They built this section and then they started building this section. And then this section fell down and they came back and rebuilt that. And if my memory is correct, that does make sense because if you look closer in here, there is some geograde in there. So it looks like they tried to learn from the mistakes and came back afterwards and added some geograde. And when we had these most recent rain events, uh, we've been getting tornadoes and all sorts of uh, weather activity here in the Midwest. Um, these, this wall did not fail, but this wall over here did. I've got a few pictures shortly after it fell down. Maybe I can upload them, um, but it's hard to see now exactly what failure occurred, but let's take a closer look. Now, I don't want to trespass. I'm currently standing on the public right of way, but from here we can see, uh, kind of look at these, uh, this geogrid. So in here, geogrid probably goes back 10, 12 feet. Uh, but it's only on the upper two blocks. I don't see any geogrid down these lower blocks. There is some drainage rock here in the outer four foot, give or take. Um, and there is a drain pipe at the very, very top. I would hope that there's a drain pipe at the bottom there, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Looks like we've got some geogrid in here. But another thing I see in here is we've got a lot of just clay, you know, fill. We got asphalt. Uh, pieces in there. We've got chunks of concrete over here, which I think that was their foundation. Looks like we got some stair steps of concrete for their foundation. Um, and earlier year, you can't really see it now. Maybe we'll take a walk over there. We can we can take a look at it. But we can look at the different layers in the soil, and you can see a lot of this is just fill soil, kind of junky. It looks like some type of fabric or something in there. Um, inconsistent fill dirt, a uh, huge chunk of concrete over there. Um, so all these things could lead to uh, this failing. And, uh, you know, this could be a very costly mistake. Um, and I think part of the issue here is using the improper materials. I don't know if these uh, waste blocks are intended for this height of a retaining wall. There are ready blocks that are a lot more expensive, but they're actually designed for this application. I don't know how this wall looks as far as leaning. Um, looks to me like it's pretty vertical on this bottom and then that top kind of leans back. So I don't know if this is pushing out right here or if uh, that bottom piece, um, yeah, I don't know if, that, if that's perfectly straight or not. I do see a piece of uh, geogrid coming out of the corner there. And this wall is a little bit wavy. Not sure if you can see it on camera, but it probably goes in and out plus or minus three or four inches. But let's take a walk up here a little bit further and take a look at these stair steps. And I think we got some gravel up in there. So we've got some more of these waste blocks that have been removed. Looks like they've got some type of rubber on the top of them. I'm not sure if they use that for shims. It looks like uh, roofing shingles. So right here... Um, I believe earlier I could see a big chunk of gravel in there. So it like there's some backfilled gravel and you can see here there's a lot of different layers in here. I'm not an engineer. I don't build these walls for a living. I don't know what's entirely proper, but doing a lot of research, doing small retaining walls. Um, soils do make a big difference in this. Also right there, another patch of gravel. So I'm not sure if that gravel is more or less likely to, to slough off and slide. Um, but definitely you can see the stair steps where the concrete was, looks like they poured concrete and then set the blocks on top of that, um, for a level, level pad area. So you can see here, they're, they're building the, uh, building up there. And so luckily this failure didn't cause any damage. Hopefully the concrete foundation for that didn't settle and hopefully they can get this rebuilt in time and, uh, properly so it doesn't fail again. Um, like I say, I'm not entirely sure that that's entirely built correctly. 
um, at least as far as the geogrid going down all the layers and also being built far enough back. Um, but we can move over there and kind of talk about my understanding of uh, geogrid and how it works. So all of this soil in here, once it's saturated, can be a tremendous amount of weight. Adding a surcharge such as a building above adds even more weight and that weight is coming down and pushing on this wall. So my understanding with these blocks is uh, these are what I would call a gravity block. So these weigh about 4,000 pounds, if I remember correctly. Um, so by themselves, they can hold a substantial amount of dirt. The problem is this is a much more sub substantial amount of dirt than what that can probably carry. Um, so, you know, typical slope like up top here would be like a, a one to one or a two to one slope, meaning for every one unit vertical, we have a unit out or one unit vertical and two units out would be a good um, slope uh, that can sustain itself without sloughing off uh, different types of soils, sandy soils, clay soils, um, organic, high, high organic material soils are going to have different uh, abilities to, to stay on a steep slope. Here we've got this rock up here. It's probably on a one-to-one -one slope. So basically what the geogrid does is instead of having this block that's two foot wide and you know two four six eight ten twelve you know this is this is probably between 15 and 20 feet tall so instead of having a 20 foot tall wall being you know supported by two feet wide what you do is you take geogrid from the very very bottom 20 feet back and every layer you add it in like they layered here but you go down all the way to the bottom all the layers 20 feet back so then you essentially have one unit piece where this this whole unit is one block. So it's it's essentially a one to one slope where this corner is being supported by there and it's a 45 degree angle and it's essentially one big block of soil. This happens all the time on freeways, interstate systems. You'll see all the time where we'll have a bridge going up and what they do is they'll actually take the geogrid and they'll connect one wall on this side to a wall on the other side and, and that spans the cross to the whole thing and prevents the walls from blowing out so I, I really am pretty confident in saying that geogrid is not I don't know if the the length may be correct um, an engineer would really have to look at that and approve that anything over four foot tall has to be have an engineer look at it. this is obviously should have had an engineer look at it and should have specified how much drain rock how much drain pipe and how far back the geogrid needed to go and how how many layers how many layers of geogrid there needed to be with these blocks you can only do a geogrid every you know block um but i would guess that an uh, engineer is going to say hey this geogrid needs to go back 10 15 20 feet deep we need to have so many layers of it and we need to have so much drain rock and we probably need to have a such size of diameter of drain pipe to let that water out and in this situation this whole bottom is about the same elevation so somewhere in there there should be a drain pipe coming out letting any water in here come out the side come out the front face because um, otherwise that water is all pushing against the wall and putting pressure on it you can see here where the water has been bleeding out of the wall um, and, and that could just be surface water i don't know if the water is actually coming out of the wall i don't see any drain spots coming out the middle there but i do see it kind of on the ends here and that's what will happen when you don't have a good drainage system you'll see that water start coming out of the face of the wall instead of down through the drain pipe and out the bottom where it's intended to go. So I will be curious to see how they end up fixing this. Like I say, an improperly built retaining wall can cost you so much more money. You know, let, let's say, let's say a properly built retaining wall here is 500 or is a hundred thousand dollars. And let's say they, they saved cost by uh not doing it proper, whether that's by not hiring a legitimate contractor or whatnot. Let's say they, they only spend $50,000. Well, if this wall fails and it uh, causes damage to the property, causes damages to buildings, it could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage over, a, let's say, a $50,000 savings in this example. Um, or even worse, there could be um, injuries to, to persons or people, that type of thing. So, uh, like I say, I'm curious to see what they'll do here to fix this. Um, I wish the best for them, for both the property owner and the contractor, that everything goes well, that uh, 
that, that this wall doesn't fail in the future, um, that this wall, once it's repaired, doesn't fail in the future, and I hope that everything's good from there moving forward. Um, but I am a little bit concerned by the lack of uh, geograde all the way to the bottom on these layers here. So you tell me, am I wrong? Um, should I be concerned here? Is there no reason for concern here? Um, how did they build it right? How did they build it wrong? Um, what should they have done better? Um, love to see that in the comments down below. And uh, thanks for watching Thrifty Garage. We'll see you on the next one. It's been a few weeks. I can't say whether they did or did not put in GeoGrid or build this correctly. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. This left side should be all the same. This right side is what they rebuilt. A couple of damaged blocks in there. There's a little bit of unevenness towards the end there. And you can see right here where the old foundation was. That looks like it's chipped off there. A couple chips here. So yeah, not entirely certain whether they use Geogrid or not. Put new rocking up top there. And uh, I guess the test of time will tell whether this holds or not. Wanted to do a quick follow up on this retaining wall. It's been several weeks, four, six, eight weeks. I don't know how long since our last video, uh, but we recently received seven inches of rainfall here locally. And there is some erosion in these dirt areas over there where it's got topsoil. Uh, but the retaining wall is intact, so hopefully that means it's uh, here to stand for the long term. Um, and uh, that's the update on the project.